this week's little video is about this beauty um, the Blue Etty AC 200p power station it's a uh, 2000 watt hour 40 amp hour lithium iron phosphate um, power station and uh, I'll run you through some of the features now output wise on this we have and this is a UK version we have two um, 230 volt socket outlets we have four USB A outlets and we have a 60 watt USB C outlet we have a 12 volt 3 amp outlet there we have a um, 12 volt and what is that that's a 10 amp um, cigarette uh, lighter style outlet there and then we have a dedicated 25 amp outlet there now this would be to uh, directly plug in and wire in um, something like a, a 12 volt uh, distribution board um, so this could be used in your motorhome, your RV, um, your boat, um, your log cabin or anything and you, you plug your 12 volt distribution board directly in there. Now we've got Power Oak on the label um, essentially it is a Blue Etty item but Power Oak I think there's another one, Max Oak, depending in what countries you're in. Um, they are resellers for these. So it's still a Bluetti unit, um, but it's been distributed by Power Oak. The Power Oak were kind enough to send me this, totally free of charge to do a review on. I've had it for about three months now and uh, very, very impressed with it so far. There's so much more I want to do with it and film with it. That will have to come in another video. I want to put it in a workshop situation. I've uh, used a... Um, another brand of uh, power unit in a workshop situation this is going to nail everything I throw at it I think um, 2000 watt maximum power it will go up to 2500 watts for about two minutes before the overload protection cuts in if you plug anything in instantaneously at um, over 2500 watts it will cut out automatically um, as I have found, which you will find out in another video. Um, right, there's some footage I shot over the last few weeks. If you take a look at that, and then I'll join you at the end. Right, so for today's little test, um, we've got the Bluetti set up in the back of the boat. We're going to see if we can run the boat um, all day long, uh, just powering everything that we need to use uh, from this unit. We've got 200 watt hours of power, um, the most uh, power hungry thing we're probably going to use is the toaster or the kettle which is around about the one kilowatt mark and um, it'll be just the other things fridge lights internet router fans pumps um, but I've got the uh, watt hour meter and time are all plugged in so we can do a full load test it's now 10 o'clock in the morning so I'm now going to switch all our boat electrics over onto this, plug those in and see how we get on. At the moment we haven't got a great deal of things plugged in. What are we pulling? 91 watts. Yeah, just over half an amp. Yeah, so breakfast time. Uh, toasters out, electric kettles out, so we're now going to have some coffee and toast and see what sort of draw that puts on the unit. You know, I believe this is round about an 800 watt uh, toaster. Yeah, there we are, we've just gone up to 740 watts um, with the toaster plugged in. Now what we'll do, we'll pop the kettle on at the same time as the toaster and go take a look at the unit. Right, that's the kettle on, and we're showing 1,691 watts on my power meter, and 1,679 on the Bluetti. Yeah, so one point, 1.6, nearly 1.7 kilowatts. Uh, the cooling fan has now kicked in. Yeah, so it's coping with those loads perfectly well. I'm going to do breakfast. I'm actually hungry at the moment. The stomach's rumbling. And then come back and run some other tests on it. Right, and throughout the rest of today, we're going to have all the other paraphernalia we normally have plugged in. Um, laptops, phones, tablets, 
I know my MacBook, um, I think it's an 87 watt uh, charger. That's fairly power hungry. Um, editing videos today for some other uh, videos I'm doing. So we'll see how the uh, Blue Yeti copes with that. You may have just heard that noise in the background. That's Deb with a hair dryer. So we'll uh, just go and see what sort of draw that's putting on the Blue Yeti unit. Yeah, we've got a total load of uh, 736 watts, 3.2 amps. Yeah, again, like most of our appliances, uh, because we're off grid and power is a commodity, everything is low wattage. I think that particular hair dryer is about um, an 850 watt hair dryer. So uh, uh, this should cope with all our um, appliances perfectly. Now all our lights on the boat are all 12 volt LED lights so those are coming off our um, leisure batteries so they're not in any way connected to uh, the Bluetti at the moment but we very rarely use them it's only when we're doing something we say we put the big light on so we can see what we're doing. Um, we've got LED fairy lights all around they plug into the 230 volt sockets a little mains transformer and the same with the under uh, gunnel lighting which I'll now put on and show yeah, you. So there's the fairy lights, we don't want them flashing in that disco mode tonight and then the under gunnel lights which we have on both sides and as I said that's all plugged into the 230 volt which is going through the uh, Blue Eti unit. Right, half past ten at night so the boat's been running off the Blue Eti for uh, 12 and a half hours and we're down to about 20% but I just had a thought it's going to go off early hours of the morning which means our fridge will have no power and the freezer box will start to defrost so um, I'm going to do this I'm going to switch our immersion heater on and you should see let me just bring this up you should be able to see Uh, that kick in. Yeah, so I'll just leave that on for a little while and that should completely drain that down. Then we can work out, um, do a capacity test on it and see what we actually um, drew out of the unit. Now, I believe these only discharge down to about 90% of their capacity. They leave about 10% remaining, obviously, to protect the battery and to uh, keep the screen going. According to the power meter, we pulled 1.318 uh, kilowatt hours. Now we discharged, there is the um, battery voltage, battery temperature, and there's all the um, individual cell voltages, all looking nice and balanced. Right, that's the power meter plugged into the charger. Just a matter of turning that on. I don't know you can make that out. We've got 495 watts uh, coming out of our shoreline power. And that's translating to 456 watts uh, going into the unit through the power supply. And to charge the unit from the mains, it used 2.3 kilowatt hours. So 2.3 kilowatt hours to put two kilowatts, two uh, kilowatt hours back in the unit, which we then got about 1.5 uh, kilowatt hours out. But I'll talk more about that later. Right, we've seen how the uh, uh, Bluetti charges from the power pack, uh, the wall adapter. Now I've got 700 watts of solar on the top of my boat. At the moment, it's configured in a series parallel um, configuration, giving us about 40 odd volts um, coming out of the solar. I'm just going to change the, the way the panels are connected. So I will have the 700 watts connected in series, and we'll check the uh, voltage that's coming out the end of those, and then connect those into the uh, Bluetti. Now the wiring from the solar comes into um, this isolator here and they're connected with an Anderson connector so I can unplug that and I've made myself an adapter yeah so the lead I've made up Anderson connector one end XT90 connector the other end that will connect into the cable that came with the Bluetti which is the XT90 
uh, to the aviation type socket um, so we can plug that in so I'm just going to check um, with my multimeter what voltage we're getting back from the solar yeah, so we're getting 88 volts which is well within the range of the um, 35 to 150 volts that we're allowed Right, some more everyday tasks for the uh, Bluetti AC200P. It's laundry day. Right, we're now going to plug the iron in and see what happens. And we can see we've got a load of 1,265 watts on there. So well within its limits. And the battery's at 100%. So we'll see what state of charge that brings us down to once the ironing's finished. So that's about an hour's worth of ironing. Dropped us down to 68%. Alright, I'm now going to plug the solar in to give this a bit, a bit of a boost. And I've obviously done something wrong because we've just got a fault code. So let's have a look and see what I've done wrong. Ah, uh, here we go. My DC input source. I've got it set to car. Um, and obviously from your solar array you're going to get a lot more come in. So change that over to PV and that should correct that. Try again. That's all good. And we've got about 270 watts of solar. Oh, here we go, slowly going up. Just one thing um, worth mentioning, this does support dual charging. So you can have two charging sources coming in. You can have the solar, you can have the power pack um, plugged in and I believe you can buy an additional power pack and plug that in instead of the solar so you can run it from two wall chargers. We're on. We've got what is ever available from that as the clouds go in and out. If we switch on the power pack, you hear the fan on the power pack kick in. Right, that does actually take a few seconds to click in. So we've now got, and um, that's jumping up and down between 150 and 300 watts of solar and 478 watts from the AC adapter. So that's gonna charge that up rather quickly. Right, so for this little test, we're gonna try and run our automatic washing machine on a quick cycle. I think it's a 59 minute cycle. Um, the Bluetti or Power Oak as they're badged in the UK is fully charged so I'm just going to turn the AC on that's now brought the kilowatt hour meter on which has all been zeroed um, so we'll see if that will do a, f a full wash and how much power it takes right now you're going to start the wash machine Right, the motor's actually running now, just uh, agitating the washing in the drum. I'm not expecting to see any real load until the um, heating element comes on. Now the heating element has just kicked in. Uh, so you can see we're showing around about the 1500 watt. It's jumping up and down because obviously the motor is now agitating the uh, washing. I'm not sure whether you can hear the cooling fan, but the cooling fan seems to go from high speed to low speed as the um, motor kicks in and out to turn the drum on the washing machine. Low speed when it's just the heating element, high speed um, when the motor's turning the drum. Bearing in mind, um, you're only gonna have the big load with the heating element on probably for the first uh, 20 minutes of the cycle just to get the water up to temperature. Once it's up to temperature that element's going to switch off then the only load you've got is the actual motor turning the drum. Now if um, the Bluetti actually passes this test this little unit is going to be a, a godsend to us 
we're we're normally continuous cruisers so we're we're off grid but um, temporarily we're in a marina so we're on a shore power hookup uh, but we only have a six amp supply um, we've been told not to plug the washing machine in because that can trip that out when all our other boat electrics are on so what we have to do we have to run the engine and we have a separate travel pack which is a separate alternator that through a box of tricks puts out 230 volts so that we can use the washing machine obviously before you put a big load onto the engine you let the engine warm up and um, so we, we're using diesel and incurring maintenance costs on the engine every time we uh, want to do a wash with this if um, this performs well all we'll do between washes plug it into the solar charge it up absolutely free and we need to do a wash plug it into the um, bluetti and our washing will be free not having to run the engine uh, so that is that's going to be an absolute godsend now i just heard the fan kick off so the washing machine's up to temperature the heating element is switched off and now we're just ticking over on Sixty-three to hundred watts. Right, the machine's coming towards the end of its cycle. Three minutes left. Um, it will now spin. It's a sixteen hundred spin speed. So all finished. Our fifty-nine uh, minute cycle actually took one hour and eight minutes. We've used a total of 0.645 kilowatt hours, 57% left on the battery. So we're well, well chuffed with that. Yeah, so I think on the strength of that, uh, man cave is going to have to be rearranged um, so I can make room for it on the shelf there. That will be a permanent placement in here, um, hooked up to the solar. So the solar will charge that over one day, two day, three days, no hurry. Then we can bung the washing machine on all our washing will now be done for free all right i do apologize actually no i don't apologize for the mess this is real life this is about as real as it gets trying to demonstrate one of these units um, with that nice fancy workshop um when we left you yesterday i think the um bluetti was down to 57 percent charged i left the solar plugged in i turned it off via the uh, main on off switch come in this morning obviously the sun had come out uh, kicked the solar into power it turned the unit back on the display was all illuminated we're now three o'clock in the afternoon been out all day just come back and it's all fully charged right so we're up to 100 percent and we can see that the MPPT controller is shut down there's no uh, current going in and it's generated 0.74 or 740 watt hours 0.74 kilowatt hours um, with a carbon dioxide emission offset of um, 0.7 of a kilogram yeah so as you can see just with the things that I've done with a very versatile unit primarily it has solved our washing machine problem um, to run the washing machine before we had to run the engine you're putting hours on the engine you're bringing your service and dates on your engine forward um, with this we don't it handles whatever load we've put on it uh, on the washing machine we've done a load the other day and it ran for three and a half hours and there was still power left into this when it's sunny i plug the solar in um, to charge it up so we're charging up for free if not i plug the mains um, charger in as we are uh, on shore power albeit a six amp supply hence why we can't use the shore power to run the washing machine um, or the our leisure batteries uh, if we pure without the engine run if we just tried to run the washing machine from the leisure, leisure batteries it would pull too much out of those um, but the uh, lithium ion phosphate uh, chemistry in here deals with that uh, fantastically and we're we're really pleased with it i'll put some links in uh, the description below depending on what when you watch this video and um, whether these offers will be on we're through the christmas period at the moment and they have a christmas offer on this unit and um, they've actually knocked uh, 300 pounds off off of it uh, making it a really really affordable unit 
Now we are toying with the idea, we shouldn't really be letting this out, of doing a van build, um, possibly in the spring, summer. Now rather than um, having a lithium or a lead acid set up um, within the van, we'll be um, utilising this. So as I said, we'll, we shall wire, oh, wrong, wrong receptacle. We shall wire from here to a 12 volt distribution board um, within that van. And then we can then take this unit out as and when, as and when we want it. So it won't be left um, in the van um, when we finished cruising around in the van. If we ever do the van build that is, it will come back on the boat. Um, and that's the, the versatility of it. Um, as I said, I can't wait to uh, use it in a workshop situation, get lots of power tools running, charging some things at the same time, really put it through its paces. But again, check out the links in the description below. Uh, you'll see the offers that are on available. Um, you can check out all the in-depth technical spec on this unit. And uh, thank you very much for watching.